Good afternoon, ladies and germs. Mike Perlman here for Techno Buffalo, and this is what a 42x optical zoom looks like. Hello everyone and welcome to my review of the Nikon Coolpix P510, bearer of the world's first 42x optical zoom lens. They just keep getting bigger and bigger. That's right folks, Nikon has taken the leap from last year's 36x optical zoom P500 all the way up to a 42x magnification system. The new P510 also has GPS, a higher resolution imaging sensor, and new image effects. Let's start it off with design. Compared to last year's Coolpix P500, the P510 is very similar. We have this same zoom control on the lens barrel here. It's pretty handy, and you could also designate it for other things like manual focus. I also like the fact that Nikon turned the rear four-way directional pad into a circular control dial as well, making it very easy to make aperture and shutter speed adjustments. We have the same 3-inch, 921,000 pixel fold-out LCD on the back, although it doesn't fold out like Canon's, and for that, I tacked on a few demerits. The Coolpix P510 has a nice effective pop-up flash with modes like slow sync and rear curtain. Size-wise, the Coolpix P510 is very similar to the Panasonic Lumix DMC FZ150. It's a couple notches below an entry-level DSLR. But of course, the big talk in the design realm focuses around the massive obscene 42x optical zoom lens. Now this lens offers a 35 millimeter equivalent of 24 to 1000 millimeters. That's pretty darn up close and personal. If you're a private investigator, look into the Coolpix P510. Nikon also installed a new image stabilization system. They shifted from electronic from the P500 to a new lens shift image stabilization system. For the most part, it worked a lot better than last year's electronic method. However, I found the mechanical zoom to be a bit clunky and loud. It's also a bit sluggish. But overall, the Coolpix P510 has a nice set of external controls. The Nikon Coolpix P510 is also stocked with shooting features. First of all, there's a great selection of scene modes, scene modes that are actually adjustable. For instance, there's a pet scene mode that offers a continuous mode and a pet face recognition that will start snapping as soon as the pet looks into the camera. There's also an excellent panorama mode that takes 180 or 360 degree panoramic shots just by a sweep technology. So just stand there, click, and do a twirly whirl and you've got a great panorama shot. Nikon also integrated image filters on this camera as well. Things like selective color, painting, silhouette, and other filters that could be applied in post like miniature and cross process. The Coolpix P510 has one of the best continuous shooting modes in its class. You can shoot up to 120 frames per second, 60 frames per second, there's a best shot selection, there's a really cool multi-shot 16 where it puts 16 different photos in the same shot in different intervals of motion. The camera can now shoot all the way up to ISO 6400 this year. It has an excellent white balance system with two different auto modes. One's a little bit warmer. There are three different noise reduction systems that actually work. There's a low, medium, and high. And there's also active D-lighting, which is Nikon's dynamic range control, really, which can also be applied in post. However, the Nikon Coolpix P510 is not all ritz and glamour when it comes to shooting features. First off, the low light shooting options were fairly limited. This camera only has an 8 second shutter speed, which means I really couldn't do a lot when it came to long exposure shooting. Also, we need to talk about something that was fairly serious. It was the most serious thing during all of my testing with this camera. This camera's autofocus, full-time autofocus when it came to video mode, was one of the worst I've ever experienced. It continuously dozed in and out of focus, didn't matter what the focal range was. And I think the best way to sum up this full-time autofocus method is that it had exceedingly bad ADD. Also another almost as equally surprising flaw on this camera is its GPS system. I took upwards of 100 pictures with this camera. It tagged five of them successfully. Also, there's a GPS logging function that tracks each picture you take along a certain destination. 
Despite the fact that this camera only logged a fraction of what it was supposed to log on my trip, it showed me going a five kilometer distance on a nondescript plain white grid with a squiggly blue line that I could have easily had drawn from memory using Microsoft Paint. One last thing is that the menus on the Nikon Coolpix P510 are severely antiquated, especially when you compare them to Panasonic's, Canon's, and Sony's. It's like comparing an Apple IIc to a MacBook Air. I mean, I didn't get any information in playback mode. I didn't even get GPS coordinates. I barely got, I didn't even get the shooting mode that I shot in, so Nikon really needs to clean up the menu system. And now let's take a stroll down image quality lane. The Nikon Coolpix P510 has a 16.1 megapixel, 1 over 2.3 inch CMOS sensor. It's basically the same sensor as last year, only Nikon added 4 more megapixels. So needless to say, it really wasn't a huge improvement. Regardless, I was able to achieve wonderful bright light pictures, excellent macro shots. Thanks to active delighting, the dynamic range was a bit better. Thanks to noise reduction, I didn't have as much grain and low light. The camera also has better high ISO management, but overall it's not a huge staggering improvement over last year's still image performance. This camera is stacked with video modes as well. It's got 1080p at 30 frames per second, 720p at 60 frames per second, and it even has high speed modes like a 120 frames per second VGA mode. While videos and bright light were very impressive, the low light sensitivity on this camera was really not great, especially compared to the Panasonic FZ150. Also at certain high zoom I got this heat wave effect that you'll see in some of my sample videos and I think that's due to the uh, lens shift system, image stabilization system. So as far as overall image quality, I would say that still images take the edge on the videos with this camera. So what's the buffalo call with the Nikon Coolpix P510, the bearer of the world's largest optical zoom on a digital camera at the current moment? Well. It's a good camera. It does a lot of great things. However, there are a few important flaws that you need to take into consideration, such as the GPS and the full-time autofocus in video mode. Personally, I would go with the Panasonic FZ150 or the Canon SX40HS. Also, you're going to have to wait for my review of the Sony Cybershot HX200V. That thing looks like a beast to be reckoned with. But until then, go to technobuffalo.com for the full review of the Nikon Coolpix P510. I'm Mike Perlman, and I will see you guys later. Who's my little kitten?